Okay, what you're looking at right now is the Boyle's Law Lab that you're going to be doing at home on your own computer. Now, if you have a problem with your computer and you need to get, get uh, access to my computers, be sure you come in in the morning early so that you have enough time to do it and you can do it here. There's no excuse for not having a functional computer. I know that computers don't always work and that's why I'm saying that right now. Now, if you look at the lab sheet, you're going to notice something here that it says that the gauge that we are using in this lab is calculated in PSI. And another thing I'm going to point out to you is this little statement right here. Yes, the calibration on the syringe is five mils off. Now, I didn't know why it was, and I emailed the professor, uh, Professor Greenbow from Iowa State University that created this thing. And he told me why it is off, because I wanted him to make a program change. I thought he just made an error. And he informed me that there is a difference in this container here. This container shows 30 mils. That's true. But from here down here to here is 5 mils. <laughs> and so what he does when he shows you a volume and a pressure, and the way you get a volume and a pressure is the first one you're going to do is just click right here anywhere in this cylinder, not in the cylinder up here, but down here at the plunger itself. Click anywhere on there and watch what happens on the, the little uh, uh, chart that you have over on the right. See, this is set for 30, and it recorded 35 because it's adding that extra 5 mils. What you want to do is in this sheet right here, in this little column, you have the mills that is calibrated on the plunger. Here, you're going to record what it actually says on the chart that's on your computer. Now, let's go back and look again. What else are you recording from the chart? You're going to record the pressure. And now if you look back here on the screen, you'll see pressure is recorded as 14.7. Now, back up just a little bit, stay here. And what we're going to do is see how we get different readings. We click and hold, and that will allow us to move the plunger up and down. And you see how the, the gauge is moving along with us? As we close this down, as we're going further into the syringe, with the plunger, the volume is getting smaller and smaller. Well, look what's happening to the pressure. It's getting bigger and bigger. Okay? Why? Because you have your gas shoved into a smaller space and it's pushing back at you with the amount of pressure that you see here. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to first 25, let go, and you see the numbers pop up here. It added 25 plus 5, and it came up with roughly 30, because I wasn't right on the 25. And these are the numbers that you're going to use in all your calculations, so everything will work right. And you then are going to, after you take five plots, and you're going to do specific numbers. I'm just going to do random numbers here, and I want to get five or six points on our plot so that you can get a feel for what this graph is going to look like. And let's get a couple more. Oops, I gotta be down here to move it. Okay, so there's another number. And we're gonna get still another, here we go. Okay, we got lots of numbers there now. Now I'm going to click here for graph and come on back so you can see the whole screen and watch what happens as we click graph. There it is, it's gonna graph it just like we did it. Okay, all of my points are right here. You can see they're in a curve, and that's because the x-axis volume is being plotted against the y-axis, or pressure. Now, they have a nice little facility over here to go to inverse. Now, watch what happens to the points when I click this button. Ah, now they're in a straight line, and they're going at a different angle. So what's happening is we did the inverse, which is what Boyle's Law is. 
pressure and volume are inversely proportional. And so you'll always get a straight line. Now, let's go back to the lab sheet and we're going to look right here. Once you have completed, let's see the whole thing, that's it. Once you've completed filling in this column and this column, you're going to calculate this column. And that is pressure times volume, which is column two, the pressure, or the volume, I'm sorry, and the pressure in column three. And that's going to give you this column. And what the question is, or what they're, they're asking here in the sheet, is do your calculations in column four above, that's this column, do your calculations in column four show that P times V is a constant? And you're going to see whether or not it is. Now, as we go to the second exercise, which is going to take you to use oxygen, instead of, as you see over here, it's telling you to use air. Now, how do you change that? I'm going to return on the computer now to the other screen. I'm going to clear my data. And I had it set on oxygen. I meant to have it on air. But this is how you change. There's air. And there it is for oxygen. If you like, you could play around with it a little bit. Try it with hydrogen. And try it with helium. It all depends on how much time you have in your weekend and how much you want to play. So I'm going to change it now to oxygen. And I'm starting out with all new data. And I'm going to do exactly what I did before. And when I'm done, I'm going to have the numbers for columns 2 and 3 again. Okay, my volume against pressure. I'm going to calculate volume times pressure in this column, like I did in the first graph. But I'm going to get a new column, and that's going to be the calculation of 1 over P instead of pressure like we have here in column 3. We're going to get 1 over P. And that's for that other graph. Now, when you're done with this whole thing and you've calculated all of this out, you're ready to do question number 3. And on a separate sheet of paper or graph paper, I said or in this sheet, I should have said just plain graph paper. Because if you use anything besides graph paper, I'm going to take two points off. And this is a three-point section of the lab duty. Okay, So don't, don't fall into that little trap. Now you see we're going to plot 1 over P, which is this column, which you've calculated, against the volume. And that's what is in this column. And the x-axis is going to be the volume, and the y-axis is going to be 1 over p. And then you're going, when you make your plots on the graph, you want to draw a circle around each point. Now let's go over and look at a sample graph. This is a little graph I did up. It won't match your graph, but it's just some random points that I did. And you'll notice that I did the plot, I did a circle around the plot, or a circle around the, the data point there, the plot that I made, and I circled all of the plots that I made. I labeled this, and I haven't labeled this column, or the, the, the uh, vertical column yet. Let's do that right now. And so over here, this is going to be the numbers right off of the graph. Let's go back and look at the graph now. Uh, even though we don't have anything on it, it will show us the x and y axes. And now you can see the 1 over p, when I change it to 1 over p, see these numbers here? We're going to use those numbers on our little graph. And so, so we're going to start out with 0 0.010 as this, 0 0.0101. Is it 101? No. Oh, okay, just that. And that this guy would be 0 0.020, and we'd keep labeling them all the way up, just like you see on the computer simulation. This should give you all the background you need to be able to do this lab successfully. And so I wish you the best of luck with your homework.
And I want to see everybody bring in papers with everything perfect, just like always. Thank you.